Hi, I'm Edgar, and this is the Warlord Open Day Limited Edition Miniature for 2022, Lieutenant Colonel Paddy Main, packed by Rhodesia, thank you. As you might expect from a limited production model, it is cast in resin, one of the easiest ways to cast small production runs. But this time it's using Warlord's fancy new resin mix, which is a lot less brittle than most casting resins, but still retaining all of the crafting benefits of resin. It feels a little bit like one of those PVC models, in that it has just a little bit of flexibility to it. But when I got to cleaning up the mold lines, they came off smoothly and cleanly, whereas with a PVC model that just tears up the surface. I have a sneaking suspicion that they cast this with a single part mold, so that there are no mold lines on the outside of the model, only in the voids through his legs and under his arm. Between the three samples I have had a close look at, from my two friends who went with me and myself to Warlord Open Day, two had nearly no mold line or flashing at all in any of these areas, but naturally the one that I ended up painting for this video was the one that did have a little bit of flashing. But this cleaned up really easily as the flashing was exceptionally thin, no thicker than a mold line usually is. And the lack of mold lines on the outside of the model is a really big deal, it makes the whole cleanup so much easier. And as it's resin, I did give it a quick scrub with some warm soapy water and rinsed and let it dry thoroughly overnight. I had a look at the official listing on the website, the painted examples from Warlord Games, and the sale page that was only up for a few days. It seems to me that there's a lot of brown on this model. The trousers, the shirt, the belts, the cap, the beard, and even the jumper is kind of a browny white mix. And this got me thinking a little bit, and I went through a second idea for this video to talk about mixing paints and how to make browns more interesting. You lot watching along will be happy to know that I ran out of editing time and so none of that will be in this video. Well, I might mention a few times here and there that I've mixed a certain colour into my brown to add interest. And we can start that off with the first part of the model that I'll be painting, the white jumper. And first I want to put in the shadows. Oddly, I usually paint the other way around from kind of light to dark. But in this case, I want to get that shadow in first with an ochre paint, which is kind of an orangey brown. And I've mixed a little extra red into it to really make it nice and warm. The desert bases I generally have for my bolt action army has a lot of bright orange. And so having this warm orange shadow will complement that, or at least that's my plan, hopefully that works. You might notice that there is a subtle zenithal effect on this model, and that is because I primed the model grey and then gave it a quick spritz from above with a light tan spray. And honestly, I think this is more of a bone white than a tan, but you know that's just what it says on the can. And this zenithal gives me all of the locations for my warm shadows. Anywhere that the grey is still prominent, under each of the folds, the armpits, the underside of the arm, that is where I paint in the shadows. And the next step is to brighten the whole thing up a whole lot. And this is the whole style of trying to paint the upper part of the model and draw the eye of the viewer to the face by painting lower parts darker and higher parts lighter. I'm not sure if I'm going to achieve that, but it's worth a try. To make sure I don't obliterate the shadows that I've just spent so much time putting on, I'm applying this layer as a glaze. At first it was a little thick and so I added some extra matte medium to ensure that I wasn't totally covering the xenophil and the shadow that's already down. This is a sand paint or a very light brown or tan kind of colour. This paint appears all over my bolt action models, so when I use this model with those it will uh, fit the theme as it were. Finally, and this is why I painted the jumper first, I'm bringing in a whole lot of white with a dry brush over this model. Dry brushing is an excellent technique for parts of models that have a lot of detail, or particularly a lot of texture. And this model is packed with texture. The sculpting work is pretty fantastic. Dry brushing is a skill that is often degraded as a beginner's technique, but it's one that I've really never been good at. Those who follow my channel may realise that I've been doing a lot of dry brushing recently and that's a deliberate practice attempt, so hopefully I don't ruin the work that I've just put into this nice jumper. 
and I'm trying my best to be as light as possible with this dry brush and I'm careful to always use a downward motion with each brush stroke. And this is going to emphasize the lighting at the highlights and hopefully miss the shadows kind of mostly. I might get a little white over the shadows, but so, as long as it's not too much. There were a few places, particularly right at the top, where I went a little too hard. So I came back with a nice sharp brush and separated out the jumper lines, being very careful. But the texture in the model made this actually quite easy. Jumping back in time a little to the trousers, for anyone paying attention, you might realize that this video isn't in chronological order. I painted the trousers with a dark brown mixed with just a spot of blue. Now I can't give any decent reason for why I added blue at this point, only that when I was mixing the paints on the wet palette, the dark brown and blue just really looked interesting. Similarly to the jumper, I added some shadows under the folds, this time by adding more blue and a spot of black. Whilst my base layer had covered all of the xenophil, the detail and texture in the sculpt was so prominent that I really didn't need it. It was easy to work out where I wanted to add this colouring. This time I added specific highlights on the trousers the slow way rather than dry brushing, and I went around this three times with mixes of my blue-brown and some lighter sand mixed in and each layer had just proportionally just a little more sand so that it would get brighter as I went. One particular point that I noticed on every pass was right here. The sculpting includes the impression of the model's hands stuffed into their pocket. It's such a small thing maybe, but it shows just how much attention went into sculpting this one. In the background here I'll play off the next few steps painting up some parts of the models with a green and light brown mix, still adding to the variety of colours. But I want to talk about the person behind the model for a moment, as I found it a little strange to be painting a version of a real person. And sure, all of the models in my bolt action armies are representative of real people, those soldiers who fought and died, but none of those models are specifically named, unlike this one. Lieutenant Colonel Robert Blair Paddy Maine. He has a Wikipedia page, there are people who have met him still alive, there's probably family members, and here I am painting a little soldier toy that represents him. Now it's not the first time I've painted a specific real named person, I painted Bad Squiddo's Queen Boudicca on the channel a little while back, but the 1940s are a little more recent than the Roman occupation of Britain. From what I have read about him in the last week since I got the model, there are several ways that he could be considered. The common story is that of a hellraiser, trashing hotel rooms, being perpetually drunk and getting into bar fights. Certainly the type of soldier who would do well in an irregular special forces unit like the brand new SAS. But between the lines I see a lot of stories coming from people who hate the Irish. In the 1940s, there's some real history there. And these people would be quite happy to paint a successful Irish officer in a poor light. I will certainly be looking more into this historical figure as I paint a very small figure that's been made in his image. You'll have seen that I've painted a lot of the smaller details, the base and the Thompson submachine gun and base coated the skin in that light brown that I've been using. The uh, largest details that remain are finishing up the skin, of course, which is difficult to show with the peaked cap in the way. Now I can show a little bit of how I paint the eyes. After halfway painting the skin of the face, I paint in a white stripe horizontally and a black stripe vertically. And all of this goes over the cheeks and even out to the temple sometimes. But it's far easier to paint the cheeks and temples neatly than it is to paint the eyes neatly. And so I go with my last few highlight layers for the skin and clean up around the eyes, leaving them looking, well, passable at least. I wanted to add one more detail here at the end, and so I carefully lined in some black on the wood furniture of that 28 Thompson. I've recently been told by a reliable source that wood grain is not just shades of brown, but really does push into black and I did a quick glaze over the top of that so it's not too harsh, and that's all it takes. There is, of course, for those who remember the beginning of the video, the small matter of a small monkey. 
A detail that I'm not sure if it counts as basing material or a second model that makes this a multi-base. But whichever way around, I should at least do something to paint up this monkey so that they can join main in my bolt action army. The crate was a simple green tan mix with some lines of that blue brown from earlier and I glazed over the top multiple times in a brown to smooth everything out. The monkey unfortunately got unlucky in that the phone that I'm using as a camera decided to run some updates, stopped the recording and didn't buzz or notify me in any way that it had done so. So I'll quickly explain that the fur was painted with red mixed with brown and highlighted with yellow mixed with sand and just about the only place I used that yellow. And so now we can move on quickly to, well, the final finished model. And here is Lieutenant Colonel Paddy Main, and a friendly monkey, painted in about two hours. It was somewhat refreshing to spend a little longer on a model to paint it a little more nicely than my usual 20 to 30 minute speed paint, especially with the interesting paint mixes that I was playing with. Brown and blue mix up nicely. I will of course use this model in my bolt action army if it's really well, although quite tall because of that pudding base, and I will eventually get around to painting more of my British someday. For anyone who doesn't have or want a 1940s British 8th Army model in 2832 scale, this model would also look cool in a noir or pulp fiction setting, and I'm pretty sure there are some Call of Cthulhu players who are jealous right now. As a limited edition model, it was only available during Warlords Open Day and on their website for that weekend, and the listing has now been removed, I have checked. The Open Day was loads of fun, good relaxing time poking around some models, gaming boards and the people behind the game's design. As I only make videos as a hobby, I decided to not make a video of the day, just so that I could kind of relax and enjoy it for myself. But this model was interesting enough that I wanted to paint it pretty much straight away. Well, all that's done and a model finished, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.